College Algebra, Topic 6.1, Solving Systems of Two Variables Using the TI-84 Graphing Calculator. Well, here we have a system here, and we're going to, in order to put these in systems into the calculator, we have to solve for y. So, let's um, send the e x to the other side, and we'll get pi y equals negative 10 minus e times x. Then we'll divide both sides by pi, and we'll get y equals negative 10 minus ex all over pi. Now when we put this into the calculator, we go to y1, and we put it in as open parentheses, negative 10 minus e times x, close parentheses, division, and then pi. For this side right here, when we solve for y, we're going to solve for y by bringing the um, square root of 2 x to the other side, so we'll have negative square root of 3 y equals 10 minus the square root of 2 x. And then we'll divide by negative square root of 3 and we'll get y equals 10 minus the square root of 2 x all over negative square root of 3. When we put this into the calculator, we'll put it in as y2. We'll open up a parenthesis for the numerator, type in 10 minus the square root of 2, then x. We'll close the parenthesis, hit the division symbol, type in the negative, and then the square root of 3. So let's begin putting that in. So here we are at y equals. We're going to open up a parenthesis. We're going to put in a negative here. And then 10. Subtract the e. It'll be second function division sign. That'll give us our e. Then our x button. Close parenthesis, division. And then pi. Pi is located here above the caret sign. So second function caret, we have our pi. Now the next line, we open up a parenthesis, and we're going to type in 10 minus the square root. So the square root is second function, the um, square button. So the square root of a 2. Close the 2. Oh, sorry. We don't have to close that 2 with this calculator. Let's go back and get rid of that. OK. Um, now I'll type in my x on the outside of the function. And we'll close our numerator with a parenthesis, hit division, negative, and second function for the square root, and then 3. OK. All right, here we go. We have our expression. And now I'm going to hit graph. Now to find this intersection, I'm going to hit second function, um, calculate. Go to intersection, which is number 5. First curve, that's true. I want that to be my first curve. This is going to be my second curve. Yes, I want to guess at that point. And we have an intersection of, or a solution of this system. So it'll be x is 1.54, and y is negative 4.52. And that's our solution of this system. Next. Let's determine the type of system that we have. The way that I'm going to determine the type of system that we have, I'm going to solve for um, y in um, slope-intercept form. This one's already in slope-intercept form, so I'm going to take the 2x minus 3y equals 6 and solve for y there. I'll bring the 2x to the other side, so we'll have negative 3y. I'll put the negative 2x ahead of the 6, and then divide everything by negative 3. This will give me y equals 2 thirds x minus 2. And we see that the slopes match, but the intercepts do not match. That means that both lines are going in the same direction, but the intercepts do not match, so they're separated. So these will be inconsistent, but um, because they don't touch, but because they have finite solutions, which is 0, they'll be independent. Next. We already have this solved for y equals 2 thirds x minus 2. I'm going to solve this one here for 2x minus 3y equals 6. Well, when I solve that, we're going to end up with y equals 2 thirds x minus 2, which is the same thing we have here. These two functions match. That means that these two equations are traveling in the exact same direction and going in and occupying the same space. Since they're touching one another, they are consistent. And because they share all the same solutions, the solutions are infinite. So this is dependent. Okay, 
finally, um, third one, we have this system right here, which is already solved in the slope-intercept form. So I'm going to take this and solve that in slope-intercept form first. This also, the 6x plus 2y equals negative 16. I'll put the negative 6x on the, or sorry, put the 6x on the other side as a negative 6x minus 16 and divide everything by 2. So we'll get y equals negative 3x minus 8. And since the slopes do not match, this is a negative 2 and a negative 3, eventually these two lines will intersect. And because they intersect, they'll be consistent. And they'll have one solution. That one solution makes these independent.